Good evening. <laughs> and welcome to a very special edition of BTL Day 4 with the man Frank Scaler special <laughs> Wednesday evening post classic edition of Day 4 and Frank It's great to see that you made it back. <laughs> I'm just laughing. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great to be back. <laughs> I'm laughing because you're like you open the show. You're like, "Good evening." <laughs> yeah, I mean it is an evening show because I typically say good morning. So I wanted to make sure that I got the time of the day right in the in the intro. I'm gonna do a uh, I'm gonna do a montage of you just laughing at me opening the show. Remember well, when it, I did the montage of you fighting fish? you know, for us on camera where you're like, zing, bang, oh, yeah. oh, load. Boom, pow. <laughs> yeah, boom, pow, whoop, pow. Uh, I'm going to do that of me just saying, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and then you just just chuckling, Laughing. just chuckling over in the Scalish studio in Cleveland, Ohio. That's because I have funny things running around in there, dude. I have jokes, I have things, but some of them I can't say on air. <laughs> uh, so all week on BTL, we have uh, wrapped up the 54th edition of the Bassmaster Classic, and tonight is no different. Uh, we're going to talk Bassmaster Classic. We're going to talk uh, Expo. We're going to talk meeting literally hundreds of diehard BTL and Day 4 fans, which warmed my heart, and I know it warmed your heart. We're oh, going to yeah. get into all of that, and then we're going to kind of take a look ahead at the month of April for Day 4 and btl but frank right off the hopper your uh second classic in a row i believe yes but the first one that you were really there for the entire thing in the expo meeting the fans doing the whole thing break it down your initial Bassmaster classic thoughts okay so i know you're i know that matt you've been doing this like a lot <laughs> since the classic started <laughs> since the classic started you're you, you've just been on every night every day so i i, I don't want to i don't want to you know bore you to tears oh you're but, not boring me at all i ask i've been looking forward to this show that's why we're doing an evening edition i leave for uh southern california bright and early in the morning and then on friday i will be out with captain ben florentino uh, chasing calico bass in Southern California oh. in the salt. So I'm, I'm all in for the show tonight, Frank. So I, I am very curious because as much time as we spent together, we really didn't have a time to break it down. So I figured, heck, let's just break it down on the show on a special Wednesday night edition. Outstanding. Dude, those calicos will be so much fun. You catch them out of the kelp. It's so cool. Yeah, we're going to uh, Catalina Island, I guess, is where the, oh. the bite is right now. So with Captain Ben Florentino, Benny Florentino. If you want to know what we're doing, there's a, a guide day episode uh, that I aired two Fridays ago out on the BTL YouTube and podcast channel. The guide day episode. That's exactly what we're doing. Oh, you will. You will have an absolute blast, dude. It's like crazy. So back to the classic. I'd rather talk about bass fishing and calico bass and you know saltwater fishing but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this okay um i i'm gonna tell you i have a story can i start with a story you start with whatever you want it's your show well it's our show but okay i'm gonna start with a story um so we frankie and i drove in um not a big deal drive i mean 14 and a half hours not not super crazy but i didn't feel like just doing it in one day i didn't feel like just road warrioring it down there and getting in it you know nine or ten at night so what i decided to do is just we'll split the trip so i have a short drive coming in in the morning and i can get there early and get settled in so we're about two hours out of tulsa and we get a text message from the hotel that i that i actually booked um months ago months and months ago booked this hotel and they're like hey uh we're gonna refund your money and blah 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 because um we have to close the hotel there's a water main break and i and i'm like and i had a few choice words come out because i'm like i knew how hard it was to find a place to stay to begin with so 
they they their comment was well i frankie called him because i'm like that's a bullshit that's a bs text so frankie called him and the guy answers the phone he's like well we wanted to give you ample time to get another place to stay and i and i cut loose i'm like you're two hours away yeah, You're I'm supposed like, to be uh, checking in in a couple hours. Right. I'm like, I'm two hours away. Everything is booked. What do you mean ample time to find a place to stay? So I had, you know, Frankie called around. We got a place to stay. And um, anyway, that's how it started. But, it, but you know, the funny thing is, is that it worked out because you called me and said, hey, when are you coming in? And I told you what time I'm going to get there. And you're like, hey, we got to go to the... Um, you know the uh, bass hall of fame thing the bass fishing hall of fame classic mixer so they have a uh they have kind of a meet and greet for those who support the hall of fame are involved right. in it the board members you can bring in people they do it at red crest they do it at the classic uh every single year so since you donated uh the uh, one of a kind Frank Sign Frank Scalish signature series drawing and then called the winner of the auction that's why I sh I shot Frankie Jr. the the little flyer and said, "Hey, you ought to stop by." Yeah, it was, and I'm glad I did, um, for a lot of reasons, and that was really cool, uh, and that's how the that's how the classic started for me, and so it was it was a lot of fun right off the rip, and then you know, and then of course, um, the the, the expo was great. No, 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 you're going back to the mixer, right? Because that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's public. No, I, that's public information. Like, I mean, they made that yeah. announcement. Like it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So I didn't realize. I didn't realize that. Um, you know, so KVD got up there and spoke with Bruce from Pradco. Um, and then and then I got a couple of mentions for the painting that I've been doing. Um, and I designed some baits. Um, for a fundraiser. For for the hall of fame um specifically and um so they mentioned all that stuff and it was kind of an it was a very neat neat surprise i didn't expect it at all and matt did you know they were going to do that uh no i'm kind of behind on my bass fishing hall of fame meetings uh as as bar bowman who runs it has pointed out to me <laughs> at the mixer <laughs> <laughs> to be painfully obvious. To, to be brutally fair. Um, so I had no idea any of this was gonna take place. So it was kind of it was kind of humbling and flattering at the same time. Um, you know, KVD said a few things and um it was pretty cool. I mean, I was what did really... KVD say, Frank? Get, get, what the one time you're trying to tell a good story, don't be humble, just tell the story, Frank. Well, I don't remember exactly what he said. He gave you multiple shout outs. Yeah, he did. <laughs> There it is right there. There's the Hall of Fame. Wait, is that? Wait a second. Is that Frankie Jr. in the background? Oh, my gosh. He wait, got this is the Bass Fishing Aid Show. I have not been on this website. All right, we got to do this. Let's see if we can do All this. Right. Open That's image right. In new tab. There it is. Now, I think we can do this and zoom in. Yes, there we go. It's okay, Frank. so there, there it is. Let's look in the background right behind Bruce's shoulder, right in that region. There he is. <laughs> Frankie Jr. <laughs> there's his 15 minutes of fame look at that that's right on the that's right on the front page that's fabulous uh so, so obviously funny. fred uh arbogast was inducted one of the five anglers right. that was inducted into the uh into the hall of fame this year so there's right. the uh jitterbug with the bass fishing hall of fame holy cow i think we're still zoomed in a little bit um and yeah, and i did not I did not I did not do design that bait, obviously. Yes. But that there's so funny. Uh like a limited a limited run of these that you will be a limited run. So strike long story short, I this is the way I believe it happened. Strike King let KVD uh put his name on and design 300 of these things for Arbogast and Correct. Pradco because a hundred percent of the proceeds for these 300 baits will all oh, go course. to the bass fishing hall of fame, Correct. but these baits will be available for purchase at some time in the future on LureNet.com. Correct. And Somewhere. KVD be... wanted to make sure 
that you were in charge of his paint job and did it properly. Correct. That is correct. That it was pretty, correct. it was a pretty, it was a pretty cool, pretty cool deal. Yeah, I was very, I was very flattered by it actually. I didn't expect it at all. Like yeah. I had no, I had no clue. And so that was kind of cool. Uh, really. And that's how it started for me. And then, and then, you know, um, the expo was fabulous. And then of course the fans were beyond fabulous. You guys that follow this show are beyond fabulous. Um, I was shocked to be honest with you and very happy. <laughs> I was very happy because, uh, the last thing I, you'd want is three people to show up. <laughs> so you guys came out and you just, you busted the door down and I love it. So I have to say thank you. Yeah, it was pretty special. Uh, it was neat. So we were supposed to, so how many color number sevens did we end up giving out? Frank? I, ha I have no clue. Um, I have no clue. They, they were supposed to bring, I believe 300, but they had quite a few boxes there and we wound up ripping through every single one of them, which was sweet. So I would say at least 500. I, I, I would, I it had to be that. cause there, so we were supposed to do it or we did it at uh 1230 on Saturday. Right. And, uh, I gotten some messages. You'd gotten some messages, some, some people who are going to be in town, some listeners, some viewers that we knew. Hey, make sure we're there on Friday, walking around the expo, ran into a couple people that were like, dude, can't wait to be there. And we're like, all right, right. there's going to be, there's going to be a few people there. Like it's not going to just, we're not just going to be, uh, yeah. elbows deep in color number seven. So <laughs> right, right, exactly. Give them to the passive people going, what the hell color is this? And why is there a seven underneath it? Um, exactly. Um, a hundred percent. So I got text, um, Hey, uh, we need you. We need you here at noon. And, and so Matt had other things going on. I text Matt any yeah. chance for noon. And he's like, yeah, at 1154, no. you said, Matt, Pradko wants to start at 12. I like how you said at 12 noon today, just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And ex <laughs> I said, well, I'm at pro guide until 1215. You said, okay, no problem. Just get down here ASAP. I will hold down the fort. Exactly. That was, that was the, that was the transaction. And, um, that's funny. You keep that. I delete all my stuff. You like, delete all your texts like every single day. Why? I just don't want all that crap in my phone. I have every single text you've ever said to each other, Frank. I could scroll back to the first time we texted. Well, no, because I think I'm too, I think there's two phones in the bottom of the lake since then. But I mean, I could scroll back. I mean, I got everything we've ever texted. Like yeah. I can go back to the beginning where I'm like, I guess it's just me and you now after Jeffrey's retired. <laughs> Let's not go back that far. <laughs> I mean, I can't. I mean, if my thumb would be a little cramped by the time I scrolled all the way back, but but no. yeah, so but um so yeah, so so then I got I got there and, and it, I was very happily surprised that there was a lot of people there. And then um started doing my thing, and I don't think I signed 10 lures and then all of a sudden mark jeffries pops out from the background um so that was pretty sweet too actually um yes yeah, you kind we, of undersold that can well, i tell I, how it actually happened yeah you should because yeah you should because there's a lot so, of blurriness there <laughs> so i get uh i get done at pro guide amazing lithium batteries just came out with a whole new line of uh chargers check them out if you're in the Fine for a charger and AGM or lithium. I think the code's BTL24. Anyway, <laughs> Fraco doesn't sell batteries or chargers, do they? Am I going to get in trouble for saying that? No, they don't sell. Chargers. Okay. Um, so I mosey on over to the Pradco booth, which is it's like two booths in one. So they have one that had like Great Lakes finesse and that yeah, they, type of stuff on right, it. And they then were there back was to a back, yeah. And then there was a partition, so you couldn't see the other side. So I roll up. And it's like ghost town on that side. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And <laughs> so I, I'm like looking for you and I don't see you, and I walk over there and and I, I kind of get around the side of the partition. I kid you not, there's 
200 people in line, Frank. It it goes. You, this is the honest to God truth. You agree? It oh, yeah. was oh, yeah. all BTL listeners all the way in the line. Then the line actually went and kind of snaked around the Suzuki booth. Oh, yeah. Which Rojas was standing in going, what in the hell is going on? And then it went to the back wall and then looped around the back wall all the way to the start of the door. And I was like, now this, this is the BTL viewers and listeners that we That's come right. to know and love. <laughs> That's right. And dude, you took time, hundreds of pictures with everyone. You signed all sorts of stuff. Everyone got their lures uh, on that first day and actually had to like cut it off. And then basically the same thing happened uh, on Sunday at noon. Well, we had to cut it off because we had to be at the bass tank at two. Yeah. And, and so, <laughs> so it's like, I look down, I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to go. <laughs> so we cut it off, but thank, thankfully, the people that were still left in line came back, you know, the very next day, which was, but, which was cool. No, it was cool. So the other thing that I was worried about, which I didn't even mention to you was, uh, uh, there, there's some sort of term for it, but where you just see everyone in line, you have no idea what the line's for, but you think, well, if they're in line, I better get in line. And then they get up and they're like, you know, what is this bait? And who is this guy? But right, dude, right, like, right. nine, like everybody was jacked to meet you, Frank, and had the stories and their favorite BTL stories. And uh, I, I was beyond blown away uh, with the support. So, yeah, same here. It was so much. It was so cool. It was so super cool. Um, I see Sean on here. I got to meet Sean. He's on all the shows. Got to meet him, hang out with him, talk with Sean for a while. It's great to meet him. Uh, I've seen a bunch of uh, a bunch of names in here uh, of guys that that were there. So. Oh, yeah. And, and I noticed I noticed you got the apple. Yeah. So uh, one of the. Here's the deal right here. So one of the uh, one of the listeners, uh, Alan, from the Pinhook Fishing Club. Uh, gave each of us an apple and it goes back to the Mark Jeffries three E's of entertain, educate, and engage. And uh, this is the educate part of it. So uh, right the apple with a nice little note in it. So Alan, you got an apple too. I see the apple right in the corner of your studio. And like I Where said, I, I proudly have it displayed here and it's also hollow in the, Oh well, no, I shouldn't say that if I need to hide anything in there, but yeah, you, you uh, don't, don't, don't disclose, man. Don't disclose. Yeah. <laughs> but, anyway, yeah. but no, awesome, awesome, cool deal. Yeah, it was great. And then uh, one of the fans gave me a a bag of uh, Bucky Nuggets. Oh, I wish I could play that video. I, yeah, well, I just, just get a, I just get a message from Frankie. It's just, <laughs> it's just you. It's just you. Oh and yeah. You, you just eat the you eat the uh you eat some bucky nuggets and you just look at the camera and go, these are effing delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And you know Was that the, your first Bucky Nugget experience? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Well the the problem the problem with those things are it's like um it's like it, it, they're they're so sweet. I mean they are like it's like just you're eating like this big ball of flavored sugar. <laughs> I it's mean, delicious though. Yeah, it was it was great. <laughs> oh, that's the dude that brought the big uh, jerk bait, the big Rapala thing in to sign. Yeah, M remember jer that? No, jer he said his jersey. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Rapala the jersey. jersey. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. I thought he was the one that brought that big. That was uh, uh, that was two years ago. No, there was a guy that brought a big lure. Yeah, uh, Saturday oh, or or okay. Sunday. But yeah. yeah, everyone's saying that the the beaver nuggets were uh, are delicious. Oh, beaver nuggets! What did I say? Bucky's nuggets. <laughs> yeah. The beaver nuggets, Bucky's Bucky's beaver nuggets. Yeah, they were, and but you can't, you can't, you can't eat those. Like you can't, like really eat those. I yeah, mean, you just every time I get them though, you just like half an hour after you just do not feel good about yourself because you eat the whole dang bag and it's well, one of those bags. Yeah, you, <laughs> that Captain Crunch. That's exactly what. They yeah, are. they're not light either. It's like a heavy bag. So then all that heaviness is right, right. Causes and then some course, internal turmoil. Of course, when you're you know washing them down with Coors Light, it doesn't help. 
<laughs> yeah. Now I, I'll be honest. Um, on my end, because I was I was uh, driving back and did a show every night except Saturday night. Uh, very light on the uh, social activities for me. You know, we went out to dinner one night. Yeah. Uh, we kind of got away from the, the downtown crowd. deal. Yeah. Uh, we'll just stick with the food. I can't. I, I don't. I don't know. You you said how old you are on the show before, right? Maybe, maybe not. Well, you're I'm, over. I'm I'm older than Matt by a. a you're old. You're old. You're over fifty. So yeah, in over remember. fifty years of life, I don't know how you made it that long without ever trying a cheese curd. Well, I'm going to tell you why, okay? Because I always thought it was curled cheese, and I'm like, I'm like curled or cheese. curled, curled like. Curdled, like, not curled. It's yeah, a like, cheese curd, C U R D. So curdled cheese. Right, but I always, uh, I always likened it to cottage cheese, which I absolutely hate. So I never, if I ever saw it anywhere, I never ordered it because I'm like, I'm not eating that. And then, and then, anyway. Gotcha. So you thought it was like sour, gross stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. So okay. Then, so go ahead, finish. Go on. So we went to Bricktown Brewery, which there's a number of them around there, but it's an Oklahoma deal. And uh, one of my favorite appetizers there are the cheese curds, which I was nervous to order because you guys are from the north. And if we all know it, you know, you get up north, you don't mess with the cheese curds. <laughs> and so we put them down in, in, in front of you and you're it's safe to say you're officially a fan of uh, cheese curds now. Oh yeah, without a doubt, one hundred percent. I'll I'll maul them now if I get them. If I see them, I'll get them because they're they're it's beautiful. I mean, they're sweet. They're not. It's not heavy. Um, it actually was surprising me how how light it was, and it was kind of sweet tasting. It wasn't like get, going somewhere and getting fried mozzarella, where it's like you know, then it's like you're eating this heavy cheese brick with breading on it. Um, these were real light, airy. I liked them a lot, actually. So we did that one night, and then we went to uh, Luke Duncan's annual uh, low-budget live party uh, downtown on the second night. Got there early. We got there early and left early, which is was yeah. was perfect because that thing was about that was a powder keg. That thing was about to get wild. Yeah, we uh, left probably you know, right. You know, we spent what four hours there. We got to listen yeah. to Low Budget Live. We got to listen to uh, Luke uh, and his and the band play. They played a great set. Had a great time. Got to talk with a bunch of uh, people that we hadn't seen yeah. in a long time there. And then I bounced at like nine thirty, headed over to uh, like the Dusty Lanes Bowling Alley, and Matt <laughs> Steffen and Johnny Schultz, uh, the guys from uh, Core Tackle had a little little party over there so i got got a bowling game in and then i didn't get, we didn't get home till like midnight that night it's an hour and 10 minute drive courtney was exhausted but she was a trooper yeah so. it was it was fun you know the, the, the we stayed at the hyatt down there and a lot now of you the, tied it on a little bit at the hyatt right like you you got to hang out with some of the guys and catch up yeah every night <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, every night it was it was cool. Um, I, you know, I was really I ran into a lot of guys that that I knew well from fishing. Um, you know, Hackney was there. Pete Pons was there. Pete, Pete and I spent a lot of time um, BSing and talking. He's a good dude, man. I, I, yeah, I wouldn't consider up. myself like a good friend of Pete, but every time I've been around Pete and I've done some uh, I've done Kurt Dove's pro bass camp with him uh interviews hung out with him before really enjoy my time around uh pee ponds yeah he's he's a fantastic guy wasn't um, he a big bandit guy is he still a big bandit guy um he he was he was with bandit for a lot of years he was i remember him like you know yeah. you think of brands with certain anglers and i think of bandit with pee ponds i don't know who he's with now um yeah i, I think he i think he's I'm just saying, in my mind, I, I think as an angler with, growing up, I associate Pete Ponds with banding. A hundred percent. I mean, that was his, that was, it's so funny because he was, he was so popular with bandit. He was almost like the bandit logo, um, yeah. which is, which is so bizarre to say. And then, and I've, and I've hung out with Pete a lot and 
people actually thought that he owned Bandit, that he was the <laughs> owner of Bandit. Um, really? Yeah, it was great. And then I think he's with um, Rattletrap, and I'm not 100. Gosh, I'm not 100% sure. That's so bad of me. No, um, that's fine. I mean, I was just saying, I, I, there's some guys who it's just like a team. Like, you know, Brett Favre will always be a Packer. Right. Even right. though he had good years with the Vikings, so. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, he's a good dude. Hackney's fantastic. Um, you know, uh, just everybody. I mean, I, I, I ran into so many pros that I used to hang out with. It was a lot of fun. It was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was, uh, it was, I overdid it a lot. Um, because I'm not, I'm usually pretty stoic. I'm usually pretty, you know. Yeah, no, you seemed like you were really mellow this year. Or and last year, like I, yeah, we kind of we kind of went nuts at Luke's party last year. Yeah, Luke's party is a blast. You know what? I I like that dude. Um, he's he's so funny. I he could be a stand up comedian if he wanted to be. I mean, yeah. his his timing is perfect, dude. Uh, Clay would like to know who your least favorite person to see was at the classic. Do you honestly think <laughs> for one minute that we're going down this road? <laughs> That's a vintage Clay Williamson question. I had, to, I had to respect it at least. Yeah. All right, Clay. I'm going to tell you. Oh yeah. I think Pete is, I think Pete is with, uh, with Epic now. That's uh Brian Knighton's company. Yeah. That, that sounds right. That sounds exactly right. Yeah. You should have said me. Good, 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 good call there, Nick. That um, is so funny. Who's the least person? I didn't actually see. I didn't actually run into my least favorite person. Which no, is, I did not. Neither did I. I'll, How I'll drink to that. that. I, I don't. I forgot my water and everything. I have nothing here. I, oh, I got to drive to Dallas tonight, or else I'd have been. Ha I'd have the coffee mug going tonight since it's an evening show yeah i'm tracking i forgot everything everything's at my kitchen counter <laughs> i mean i can hold the, the fort down for here here's what i can do i'll show you what i can do we can put uh we can put some music up if you know i'm not down no i'm not going i'm not are you sure that. because yeah, i'll 100%. just i'll just oh, no. put this up like that and then we'll just make that full screen and then i'll just <laughs> And then here, I'll just throw. No. There you go. We're on a commercial break if you need to go down and get a cold one. No, I'm not going. I'm not leaving. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. But yeah, I would give it a, uh, from the fan interaction, the experience and the way things went for what we were there to do, I give it a 10 out of 10 classic. Yeah, I Frank. do too. I do too. Um, I, I didn't mind the fishing as much either. Um, I know, I know it was kind of up and down, but, um, I thought it was really interesting because, um, forward facing sonar played for some, some never even looked at it, um, which is kind of synonymous with this time mm -hmm. of year. I mean, once, once the bass are coming to the bank, um, tr traditional fishing becomes really good. Um, you know, it was a little bit, it was a little stalled. Um, I thought you guys would be a little farther ahead than you were because of all the trees that were blooming when I got down there. Yeah, but it's really early. It's It, it was a weird jacked up week. Like Christy said, Christy said, two weeks, we blow this thing out. Two weeks earlier, two weeks later. He's like, this was a weird week. It should have been prime, but it was a little bit ahead. Typically, I mean... Typically, it's another couple of weeks before what was happening is happening. That little lull between when they get on the beds hard, when they're on the pre-spawn hard. Right. So, so like what we're, we're experiencing a lot of cold weather coming back here now, um, where we were experiencing a warming trend, and the fish were actually getting to the bank. Um, and now, now we're going to have nights in the 20s again for a few nights in a row. You know, in the in the low to upper 20s, and um, it's going to be funky. It's going to be kind of like what they experienced where some are, some will be there. Some won't be there. Um, it's going to be interesting. I, um, I'm trying to, I might sneak out tomorrow and see, uh, 
you know, just see what I can see. I'm not going to be able to spend the whole day out there, but I want to get out there and, and just to, so I don't get fooled. You know what I mean? I don't want to be mm-hmm. fooled when I actually get a chance to go spend some time on the water. I want to make sure that I'm semi dialed in. Um, so I'm going to try to sneak out tomorrow, but, um, yeah, but it, but I give, I'll give the same thing. I'll give it a 10 out of 10 for what we had to do there. And for the fans showing up and everything, I'm going to say totally a 10 out of 10. Um, I didn't watch a lot of coverage, uh, just because I was, you know, busy socializing. So I didn't see a lot of the coverage, but we, you know, everybody had their phones on everywhere we were mm-hmm. checking the score track or checking everything all the time. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool. Just for the sake of accuracy, Pete Pods is with Yamamoto now. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just wanted to make sure I got that. You right. gotta be, you gotta be at, you gotta be accurate. But um, yeah, so it was really, it was really great to see Pete again. Um, you know, he is, in my opinion, he's, he's a class act, man. I mean, that guy's just a class act. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, did you get a chance to look around the expo at all? Was there anything you saw that, that uh, tickled your fancy? I thought it was cool. I got to, to actually put my hands on the new, uh, that craw tube from Great Lakes Finesse that we had seen so much about on the day four that had been uh, one of the new releases. And I will tell you this. The pictures and the videos make it look good, but it doesn't do it justice until you get that thing in your hands yeah. and you can feel the weight of it and the balance and how it's designed and how it looks. It's just one of those baits. And I'm not BS at this. No, it's one of those baits. When you get it in your hand, you're like, dude, that's going to, that's going to catch up. Oh yeah. It, it, that juvie cross surprised me to no end. Um, I, you know, I, I have some and, um, it's, so perfect Mm -hmm. it is the perfect size it's it's really cool and then the thing that i didn't know that i like was how you could rig it weedless um that that was kind of that was kind of sneaky i thought that was pretty slick um you know so yeah it was really cool the great lakes finesse stuff is so it's such a fine-tuned set of baits it is so remarkably fine tuned um, that that it's a system. The everything they make is a system, and and I was I was kind of not upset, like upset, like angry, but like I'm trying to eliminate tackle from my boat, and yeah, all I adding. keep doing this is, is adding, adding it. it. Yeah, all I keep doing is adding and adding and adding. You know, pretty soon my boat will go ten. <laughs> but that's but, that yeah excites so that me. was cool anything yeah. else that you saw that uh that was interesting well honestly i wanted to I, I honestly wanted to look around more than i did um at i wanted to see some new paints new paint schemes people were doing mm-hmm. and stuff like that the thing that surprised me more than anything was the attention the glide baits got over there i didn't i, I that's all i heard people talking about was the glide baits and I, and I'm like, you know, one, one, one friend of mine came up to me and he's like, look at, I got, and he's, you know, pulls out three or four of these glide baits and I'm going, Oh, those are pretty sweet, man. And, um, he goes, yeah, they're only 200 bucks a piece. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so, well, so you yeah, t- typically don't lose those. Well, you couldn't, you guys don't lose them, but throw them up here where the pike and muskies live. Oh you'll yeah, go, that's you'll go true. through two a day <laughs> easily. I never even thought about that. I mean, easily. I have thought about that. That's why they like to use the cheaper kind of plastic mass produced ones up there because they, they do get taken by the secrets. Oh yeah. My buddy Jeff comes up, he's showing these eight inches he bought for a couple hundred bucks each. And I'm, he's like, dude, you got to get into this glide game. I go where I live, dude. I said, there's no way that's, you might as well just throw $200 in the water and leave. I'm just not, there's no way, you know what I mean? I can't do that. So, yeah, but that, that intrigued me. Um, I just, uh, it, it's, it, it's like um, my interest is so peaked on them. I'm actually going to get some and throw them, um, but I won't do it. I won't do it on the lakes that have muskies and pike in them. 
uh, I'll have to be real careful where I throw those here. I got one lake. Um, if I threw it out there, I, there's no telling how many I would lose because I musky fish on this lake and I catch, sometimes I'll catch nine a day and they're, and they're gargantuan. You know, you hold them up in the bellies down here, you know, like that. Um, I could, you could never throw one of those in that lake. You'd, you'd have to use wire leaders. There's no way you could do it. All right. Let me ask you this. I think you've talked about this a little bit. Uh, and I do want to ask you, it was a pretty cool deal to see Justin Hamner win wire to wire. He was on yeah. uh, BTL the day after uh, the classic on Monday. You can go watch that show. Uh, when you won the Northern open out of Buffalo, you won 50 grand in 2004. Yeah. Was that a, in your state at that time, would you consider that a life changing tournament? Like was your life different the three days before you entered that tournament than yeah. it was after? Yeah, it was. Um, it it was, and it wasn't because of the money. Um, okay. it, it was because of, it was because of what I was able to parlay that into after that win. Um, you know, the, the money helped because I was, when I started fishing, I was fishing on a shoelace and then, and then everything, you know, everything started clicking in, clicking in. Um, and, uh, I want to say, I, I can't say it was all because of that win, but that win helped that out a lot. And, and, um, it was really kind of, that tournament there was really special in a lot of ways. Um, fish, fish and I became really close friends as I was competing on tour fish. For those that don't know, it's fish Fishburn. Anyway, we became really good friends. And then he was not going to be at the Buffalo tournament, um, for whatever happened, whatever the reasons were, he wasn't going to make it at Buffalo. So the first, um, first two days he wasn't there. And so I, I didn't think he was going to be there. And then sure enough, he showed up on the last day. So oh, cool. it was, it was hilarious. I mean, it was, I was so happy to have him there. It was hilarious. So he, what he does is, and I don't know if I told the story on air or not before ever, but, but, but I, I come in and, and you know how it is, Matt. Um, they'll tell you, you, you know, you need X amount of pounds to take the lead. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so I put, the bag of fish on the scales and I'm doing the math in my head. I, I'm, I'm looking at the guy I got to beat. I'm doing the math in my head. So there was this stall where I don't, I literally don't say a word. I'm just, because I'm doing the math in my head and, and, and then fish is like, dude, you won. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I, and it was like, Oh, holy crap. I won. So he goes, he goes, where's Rachel. I go, she, she's at Notre Dame with the kids. She went to with all her, old you know notre dame cronies they mm -hmm. went to notre dame for uh parents weekend or some crap i don't know what it was so fish goes get her on the phone so i go i go are you serious he goes call her up so i i call her and, and i'm like hey babe you know blah 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 and fish grabs the phone from me and i and i i said hey i i won the I won the tournament and fish grabs the phone for me and he shoves the phone on the microphone. And here's what she goes. No, you didn't. <laughs> and so fish hands me the phone. I go, yes, I did. He puts the phone back. She goes, no, you didn't <laughs> like that. I'm like, are you serious? You know? So it's like, and so fish finally grabbed the phone. He goes, Hey, Hey honey, he won the tournament. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was so funny, man. I was so embarrassed. I'm like, I'm like, wow, she really doesn't think I could do this. <laughs> That's a great story. So this is Hamner's first major win. Uh, what are what are some of the things that he's going through right now just as far as you know a 33 year old guy looking over and saying okay that's it's not a team tournament it's not a regional tournament it's not a, a second place trophy like like i was the best like that's real like is that does that take a while to sink in after your first kind of major win like that and i know well, i mean 
Uh, Obviously, I'm, an Open's a big win, but I mean, a Classic is on a different level, but there's got to be some stuff yeah, that I'm so, sure you can relate to. Yeah, 100%. So let's let's get this right off the rip. Um, the Classic is the Bassmaster Classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know so, what you're so, saying. And, but I'm just so, talking about getting right, that first win. Right. So anything that, anything that you feel w- winning an Open or an Elite event is a hundred times to be more intense when you win the classic. So, so here's the reality of it. I knew I won. Obviously mm-hmm. I, I got the big trophy literally seat belted next to me. So nothing happens to it. Um, I had to leave right after the classic and drive to drive to um, upstate New York um, for a photo shoot. And so I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be there in the morning the next day. And, um, needless to say, I, um, celebrated exuberantly over the victory. And so they call me up and go, Hey, where are you at? And I go, I can be there in three hours. <laughs> Cause I had nice. not, I had not left my room yet. In fact, they, they woke me up. So, so anyhow, so I, I, I pack my stuff up and I drive all the way up to, um, this bay off of Lake Ontario, I think, um, I drive all the way up there. I don't get, I literally don't get there till four o'clock in the evening. And, um, they got all these dudes there, all these other pros and stuff. And, and the, the guy I meet, I meet him up at the ramp and he's like, nobody's got any fish for pictures. And I go, you're kidding me. He goes, no. And so I, my first thought is, um, I drove all the way up here to turn around and drive back. Yeah. So I go, come on, we'll launch the boat. We'll find something in this bay. And so I started idling out. And the whole bay is a grass. It's all grass. So you probably launched in Shamo. I don't think it was Shamo Bay. But but um, so it was all grass. And I said, this is going to be easy. And he's like, what are you talking about? These guys have been fishing all day. Nobody's got any fish for pictures. I go, all I got to do is find a bare spot, an open hole, or or where this grass ends. If it's got rock on it, we're going to tear them up. And so I idle out there, and I and sure enough, dude, it was like, it was it was like the light bulb. The grass, all of a sudden, the grass just just ends, and and I got to like a triple echo return on my 2d sonar and it, you, you know the bottom is, is solid as concrete i literally shut the boat off and just let it start drifting forward i reach in my rod locker i pull out two remember when when uh yum made those rib worms those little four inch rib worms yeah. anyways it's like a ringworm it's like a four inch ringworm with a hook tail on it little tiny hook tail and it's it's a ribbed ringed body Mm -hmm. anyway i had two rods with those rigged on it so i pulled them out i I gave the guy i was with one actually the guy i was with his name was chris i gave chris one and i took one and i said i dropped a trolling motor i spun the boat around i said turn around and cast towards shore and so we both cast out there and and no lie it was like don't don't whack whack we got them going and we sat there and we literally caught two limits of decent largemouth like that and so he gets on the phone he calls all the camera dudes he goes we got fish yeah he goes everybody get over here scalish got them and so i was laughing dude i wasn't there for 20 minutes and he looks at me he goes boy when things go right they go right don't they and i go hey let's take pictures, man. And so, so we did that. And then I drove home and I, it was, on, it was on the way home that it hit me. Cause I, because by then I had, cause I had to go a few hours North of where I was. So I added, so it was about six hours till I got home and I, and I was, and I didn't even go straight home. You know, where you know what I did? I went straight to OSI and victory gave, tour. Yeah. I gave them the trophy. And they to put nice. in their they put it in their showroom, but you got it back, right? Oh heck yeah, it's right here. Okay. It's right there. Oh okay. So so yeah so um 
it sunk in when I was going home. I was by myself. I got the trophy strapped to the seat and I'm driving home. And then I, I just started shaking because I was like, <laughs> holy smokes, man. You know what I mean? It's, it was like, wow. And, yeah. and, and so I could, I couldn't even imagine what hammer feels like. I could, I, I couldn't think even he imagine. knows how to feel or what he's feeling. Oh, I dude, I would be, yeah, I, I could not imagine at all. But, you know, you see someone like Hamner and the like the pure joy that he had and relief and disbelief. And then I think back to like KVD's third and fourth. And oh, I'm yeah. like, dude, we took for granted. And I say this as a as a compliment. What a ruthless machine that guy was on the wall. Oh, dude, we he he made it. He made it so you expected it out of him. I mean, it was like classic three. Like, yeah, we all remember when he jumped up at the Pittsburgh Classic, you know, on that stage and did that, like the raw, like, ju and and that. But, like, the third of the, like, dude, it was just, like, that's yes. what I'm here to do. Like, thanks for coming out. I'll see you at the press <laughs> conference. I'll see you at the champion's right. toast. I'll see you at the photo shoot the next morning. I'll collect my bonuses and then I'll kick your ass at the elite series next week. Yeah. hundred Like it was, I, I don't 100%. think we appreciated how surgeon like, and it, it, like I said, it was very tiger woods ish looking at it because oh, yeah. you look at ham and I'm not saying there's a wrong way or a right way to win it. I mean, I know cliff pace took it, took a lot of crap in 13 when he didn't celebrate enough for it. And then you yeah. get to no Cliff Pace, and you're like, dude, like, no, he's not going to go no. that crazy on it. Like, that's not Cliff. Like, that was totally. And then everyone talks about Chris Lane when he dropped to the one knee. Um, you know, and, and you know, there's a bunch of different celebrations, but that's what I was thinking of was, dude, like, when KVD was winning them, dude, it was they, just he, expected. Right, and he, he expected I, it the most out of everybody. Well, he, he demanded that kind of performance out of himself. He put a lot of pressure on himself. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, we won't see that again. We, we won't see that again. Um, I mean, we kind of see it uh, in a different way with Wheeler. Like, I, you know, Wheeler oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Win and he does. But uh, yeah, I, like no, I we, Wheeler's style. I think everyone will 100 percent agree. The classic is the classic and there's only one top stage in the world of professional right. bass fishing. Uh, I fully expect to see Wheeler on that stage before it's all said and done. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, but you watch Wheeler's like how he team. wins and things like that. And he's yeah. got some of those machine tendencies. Yeah. He's, he is, he, Wheeler's a beast. Um, he actually, he's a real beast, mm -hmm. but, but KVD was different. Um, it's always different when you're the first one too. Um, yeah. Don't forget that. But he he took the tour over by storm. I mean, yeah. by storm. I mean, I, I've what he could because if you think about it, the difference between the two is KVD changed the sport. He changed who follows the sport. He changed the interest in the sport. He had a lot to do with, I hate to say growing the sport. I, I hate that freaking term. But um, but he had a lot to do with bringing a new audience um, to that sport. And it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, it was, it was phenomenal. You know what? You got to take your hat off to the guy. There's nothing yeah. in else. case you're wondering who we're talking about. Uh, this is the guy we're talking about, Kevin Vader. Who is that? Oh my gosh, Frankie's still in the back. Of that <laughs> still are, still they, on the course, like telling the story about how you go to the left of these. He's given up one of your holes right there. He's like, No, you go through the cut <laughs> and then you go right, you go right around the island. That's what he's doing right there. He has given up some Frank Scalish Lake Erie <laughs> juice to whoever this gentleman is right here. This is Frank. Look at him. He's looking off. He is telling something that he should not be telling about a spot that, that you found 30 years ago. That's so funny, dude. That's so epic right there. That's great. <laughs> Good for him, man. Oh, I do need to show. Uh, speaking of scalish photos. 
what do, what do you have, Matt? You're scaring the hell out of me right so now. I was stopped in the uh, I was stopped at the expo. They said, "Man, I've been looking for you. I printed something out for you." And this is high quality. This is the eight <sighs> eight by ten. <laughs> what are the oh list? What God. What are the listeners' years? I I can't remember his name. He was awesome though. He had like a couple. He's like, you can choose which size you would like. And I was like, I will take the eight by ten. It's either that or like a wallet size, which I thought would be weird to carry around. Yeah. So I went with the eight by ten. Um, and that. That is going to go right there on the wall of the BTL studio <laughs> I once I get it. Once that. I get it framed. I mean, yeah. look, I don't know how they had that rendered, but that is like it's very it's quality. Like an, it's an HD quality eight by ten. Yeah, because um, I he actually approached me um, with a with a color seven and that photo, and I signed the photo for him and the color seven. Uh so I had this uh, Saint Jude the uh the team from St. Jude, uh Gretchen and Katie came into town because they were at the Bassmaster Classic. And then I took them fishing here because Gretchen, who runs that tournament, had never fished before. And they they were looking at the studio. She picks this up and she goes, Who is this? <laughs> and I said, uh I said, that is Frank Scalish. That's and she Uncle goes, Frank. That looks like a very interesting guy. And then she asked how old it was. And I was like, that's gotta be from the eighties. I have no idea, dude. Like kind of put a time stamp on that. That's gotta be from the eighties. Doesn't it? I would say it's probably like 87 ish. May, may, maybe that's my champion. That looks like my champion. So that was my 16 and a half foot champion. Mm -hmm. Um, that puts me pretty, pretty flipping young. Pretty You're in your twenties there. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's going to go in the BTL studio. That's hilarious. Jack, I had that. I had the I hair. I look like Ben Milliken in that picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had the hair. Didn't I see, so see what happens when you have that kind of hair when you're young. <laughs> that's so funny i can't believe you you absconded with that photo and and, and per usual and per usual you've kept it to yourself how didn't you tell me that uh well, some things are just better better Left kept on. yourself <laughs> until it's till it's time to reveal them right? yeah until it shows up on bcl speaking of which oh reveal it is time to reveal you got yours too Yes, I do. Uh, and yes, this is a shameless plug. It's a ruthless, shameless plug, but I don't really care. So it that, is time to reveal the 2024, the first, first edition of the 2024. It's been a year and a half since we've had any of it, of the Frank Scalish Signature Series line of apparel for sale now. The store is open on bassone.com. Click on the shop BTL tab at the top. Let me go. Yeah, and uh, and, it, and we're we're running out of time too. What do you mean? Aren't we? Isn't Why? it? Isn't this just for like two weeks or something? Oh, I thought you meant the show was running out of time. No, the show could go on forever. Uh, yeah. That. So, yes. Yeah, so that is open. The store is only open through April eighth. What that allows us to do is sell those at a reasonable cost without having to buy a bunch and then doing the back stock of it. So. We listened to what the viewers wanted. We listened to what Frank wanted. ATS Printing did a good job. Read the tag on the inside of that shirt, Frank. What type of t-shirt it is. It is not just a normal, like, it, Hanes no, tee. It's not. This thing is sweet. It's got a no-stretch collar, and it's it's uh, called Comfort Colors. It's a heavyweight, 100% um, cotton, no-stretch collar, which I like because... I can't stand when the t-shirt collars get all wrinkly and and all stretched That's why out. we did it. So it is a $30 t-shirt straight up instead of a $24.95 t-shirt, which is what the last one was, which was a Hanes. So there's a number of different options on that. This is the one you're holding is what I would consider to be your signature piece. 
the black with the green BTO with the largemouth bass. That is a drawing that you've shown on BTL. That is a right. Frank Scalish original. And then we put your signature underneath it. So I will, uh, I am, I am six foot, 180 pounds and the large fits me perfectly. And um, I am, it is not I, too long. It doesn't billow out on the back. I'm very happy with a large for my size. Yeah. And I'm, I'm uh, uh, much heavier than you, Matt. I'm coming in at a whopping 220 and the two X fits perfect. Yeah. So I haven't washed mine, but it can shrink a little bit and I would still feel comfortable with it. I washed mine. But it's kind of a, how much did it shrink? Barely, a, barely noticeable. Barely noticeable shrinking. Yeah. So uh, I'll pull it up now. Uh, whoa, whoa. What the heck just happened there? Uh, let's go to that. <laughs> they could have been a lot worse, Matt. I'm there we go. Saying. All right. So here are the t-shirts on it. So there's a number of different, we went with all kind of natural, uh, muted colors. There's ones that have large mouth spotted bass and small mouth with the Frank Scalish signature underneath all of them. Uh, there's, uh, aqua color. There's long sleeve. There's a uh, long sleeve in the black as well. It's the same T-shirt, uh, kind of the heavyweight T-shirt like we had with the loaded to the cork T-shirt. Uh, 100% ring spun cotton. I don't know what that means, but apparently that's a selling point because they put it first. Yeah. Anything uh, the garment hard. died. Oh, the garment died for that lived in feel and almost no sh no shrinkage at home. So we all know shrinkage is never a good thing when it comes to the garment. <laughs> so it's never a good thing. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> we went we went heavy on those shirts. That's kind of the uh that's the uh Frank Scalish signature series line of apparel right there. So to get to that, all you do is you go basszone.com. Boom. There you have, see it's zero. You can also go through, watch the previous shows that are on Bass Zone. Uh, you can read about like me and Mark, and then you can click the shop BTL tab, shop BTL, boom, there it pops up, order it, store closes on the 8th, then they'll make all the garments and ship it to you. So Perfect. higher quality. Uh, I will selfishly also plug a couple other things, and then I'll, I'll have a call to action at the end. Is that okay? Yeah. I'm okay, sitting so right here. Classic BTL shirt, classic BTL hoodie. That's going to be uh, your normal BTL or normal hoodie like you would just buy anywhere. This BTL hoodie that I have on is the super heavyweight hoodie. It's 60 bucks. It's a pullover. It doesn't shrink. It's got the thick cuffs on it. It's one that you were super nitpicky about with the loaded to the cork. cork sweatshirt yeah, yeah. best hoodie made yep and then uh kind of a form-fitted btl with the new btl logo on it uh i've been wearing that one the last couple of days of btl so i've i was hesitant like dude let's take a 60 dollar hoodie like that's ridiculous and a 36 dollar no. long sleeve but it's not they have assured me those are normal prices now and especially because i went up on the i'm not making anything we're not making anything more on it it's because they went up on the quality and the pricing for them yeah, but no, the, 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 the thing with the thing with a good hoodie is they last forever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, also a ladies pullover hoodie. There were a lot of husbands and wives, uh, met a lot of lady anglers that were at the Bassmaster classic. So I said, Hey, Catherine, we need to throw a lady fit pullover hoodie in there. So if that is on your shopping list, there's that, <clears throat> a youth hoodie threw a youth hoodie in there as well. And then my favorite, just cause I feel like it's like uh it's like kind of dapper quarter zip with the circle BTL logo. That's the one I was wearing at the classic and all the, all the footage that's on my Instagram. So a large is ample for me in that, like it can totally shrink. I would, I would definitely true size that one or else you'll, it'll be a little bit baggy. Uh, what else Perfect. is there before I get to it? And then the Frank stuff threw some hats in there couple of leftover stuff. So here's the call to action. Here's a call to action, Frank. So All right, every ready. year we do the, with the St. Jude fundraiser and we do a t-shirt for the St. Jude fundraiser. 
And this is this year's t-shirt right here. It is the first thing on it. 100% of the proceeds go to benefit St. Jude uh, as part of the Dick Hiley St. Jude Bass Classic that raised over $1.1 million. It's up in Wabasha the first week of May. Uh, I will be there uh, supporting it. So we revamped the shirt for this year. We put fish in the St. Jude, the Bass Fishing Saves Lives, BTL, and St. Jude. Uh, bumped that up to $29.95. 100% of the proceeds from that go to St. Jude. Last year, I think we did a little over $2,500 just in t-shirt sales. Perfect. I am also currently working on getting a sponsor of BTL to match whatever we do in t-shirt sales up to a certain amount. Oh, that's fabulous. So, so here's a deal. If you're going on and you're going to buy one of Frank's shirts or you're going to buy some BTL stuff, add a BTL St. Jude 2024 shirt to that order. Uh, if you listen to BTL, we have my, I've had Miles Berghoff on. I just talked to him today. He right now is in Memphis at a St. At St. Jude's with his one-year-old who is currently going through chemotherapy treatment. Uh, it really hit home. I mean, when you're talking about a one-year-old Riley, full of life, things are going good, as good as they can be to have a one-year-old in St. Jude for the foreseeable future. They do not have any bills that they have to worry about. He is able to create content. He said, all things considered, it's 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 been pretty remarkable on how quickly they've gotten into a routine but i've always pushed this shirt before i'm really pushing it hard right now i sent that shirt to joey and i sent it to matt stefan i sent it to a bunch of other people to say hey get this shirt out 100 percent of the proceeds go that and then the cool thing is it's not like it just goes to saint jude it will actually go to you they will know that it comes from uh the btl because it will be part of it'll be our donation to the saint jude dick highly bass classic that we have every year so perfect there you go. If you know someone, it's also that's uh it's also a uh 60 40 cotton polyester blend. Uh it's the same one that the same type of shirt that it was made out of last year. So it's a little bit more of a, a truer fit, a softer feel on it, uh, but still thick. So there you go. I'll put the link in my description. I sent it to uh Frankie. If you're cool with that, you can put a link in uh in your social medias too as well for that. Yeah. Link. 100%. I like the blue color though, don't you? Yeah, the blue's kind of cool, man. I I'm I'm I like them both. I like the black a lot actually. Link for the shop is in the description uh in the YouTube description. Perfect. We good on the clothing? Wrote, I actually wrote it down. Heck yeah. Oh, I got one more piece of clothing. I showed it on the show, but I don't think I've shown you. So you know Rick, it was his 50th year and he had a booth there yeah there's the rick clun hat i waited in line got nice. rick clun to sign it dude is that not cool that's very cool look at that i mean like that's gonna be on the wall forever like i'm putting that in like a little shadow box hat yeah I'm you you have to you have to protect that hat i know this is a blue or net sponsored show but i'm showing the rio rico that's the 50 years of fishing Rick Clun signed the Rio Rico. It's what he won the U.S. was first U.S. Open on on the top water. So I'm taking the Rico and the hat. Boom, putting it in a shadow box. Dude, I have a funny Rico story. Let's hear it. Like okay. an Uncle Rico story or a Rico? Hey, Uncle Rico. Story? Hey, Uncle Rico. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I do. <laughs> I, I do. So, I was like, okay, well, we're going there. <laughs> So I, I have a friend of mine that owned a, a tackle shop here where I live. It was, it was called the Rod Maker Shop, and great, great guy. So, so one day I'm over there, and Ray goes, "Hey, dude, you have to try this lure." And I go, "Let me see it." And he shows it to me. I go, "Oh, it's like a pop bar." He goes, "No, it's it's a Rico." I go, "How much are they?" And I think back then it was like nineteen bucks or something. I go, dude, I'm not throwing a $19 pop bar. Forget about it. He goes, no, no, seriously. He goes, just take it with you. I was going to Lake Norman. He goes, take it with you and fish it and tell me what you think. And, and, and then I said, well, I'm going to give it back to you 
I'm giving it back to you when I come home. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Give, just give it back to me when you come back. But fish it and let me know what you think. And I'm like, okay. And so I I got it tied on, and my buddy Troy and I are zipping down the lake, and we, we, got, we got this riprap wall that we always fish. And it's blowing like a hurricane. I mean, it's blowing. And I slide up to that wall, man, and I said, watch this, Troy. This thing's 1999. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, nobody would <laughs> yeah, yeah, buy yeah. this. Little. And I fight it out there, dude, and that wind catches it. And it just makes a big hook right into the rocks. Bam! Oh, no. dude, right. oh those things chip. The, dude, build, the mouth on them chip like it's going out of style dude. if you look on them wrong. It was my first cast, my first cast with this thing. It peeled like an onion skin, dude. It was, it's, by the way, they're bone underneath. So mm -hmm. that wasn't such a bad thing, but, but I had, I had to bring that bait back to my buddy. There was, there was literally zero paint left on it. I think there was some red on the paint right part. off of it, dude. It's dude, almost yeah. unbelievable. I got it broken in for you now. Right, dude. It's it was the funniest thing on earth. It was literally, it was, it was literally uh, my first cast with the thing, and, it, uh, and it, I was just like, "Oh my god, that um, is a good story." I felt like I was throwing a Christmas tree ornament. It just blew that, apart. That's like juice. The first heard of it. We're ever throwing glide baits. I tie them on one, and I mean, dead center is a metal dock pole. First cast. And he doesn't Bam. say a thing. And I just like, I just do one of these looks. And uh, we don't hear anything. And I said, you're getting the S waiver. And I cut it off and tied the S waiver on. <laughs> early 1999. I said, cast away, juice. Uh, yeah. I do want to mention one more thing. Uh, if you order the St. Jude uh, BTL support St. Jude shirt, we're going to throw in a... Uh, btl die cut decal for free oh perfect yeah so you can get that so you can either give it to you can either give it to that one buddy that has the refrigerator that he puts all the sticker and there's everyone has that buddy who either has the refrigerator with the stickers or everything on his bass boat is a sticker that someone else is giving him regardless of the <laughs> brand like you all know who I'm, I mean, everyone has one hey dude and, i got uh, the door or to you my, can put it on your boat or truck so the door to my fly tying room is like that i've got um i've got partial boat wraps on it from from my years fishing partial mm -hmm. pieces of boat wrap i've got all kinds of crazy shit on there bomber logos oh, mormon sure. logos i got another so i got a new addition too gosh i'm leaving the show a lot today sorry i'll be right back that's all right see ya so while matt's gone I'm going to tell you a little story about Matt. Oh, wait, he's back. <laughs> no, I just, I literally, it was the other side. It was like on the other side of the studio. So, uh, you got to ride in the new, in the new, uh, the new wheels. You were like literally yeah. the first person to ride it. And the thing had like, well, second. Fair point. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, focus here all right focus. Focus. well just while you were talking about things that are sentimental so that uh 18 truck uh okay so i got a new <laughs> truck and so the old... <laughs> oh my god you people don't know how funny this is so uh when i was getting rid of the 18 it had 117,000. I'd taken that thing across the country and a lot of fond memories of it. And I realized I'd had the same. No, we're not. Literally, I've got a water and Frank hasn't drank anything in over an hour. No, I'm I'm actually dehydrated. And <laughs> I realized I put this OU on the front because we don't have to have license plates on the front of our vehicles. I put this thing on 317,000 miles ago and it traveled with me the entire time. I never took it off since I got the truck in 2018 until a couple days ago. And that thing is absolutely just beat up. I mean, it was brand new and metal. I mean, look at all the rock scars and stuff oh, on yeah. it. So I was well, talking like just sentimental stuff. I'm like, dude, that's going in the studio too. That's the that's the yeah, truck yeah. that I was in when I started, you know, fishing the opens and the Toyotas and all that. 
It has to, dude. You put 350 yeah. some thousand miles on that truck. I mean, think about all that, all the stuff that license plate has seen or been hit by. <laughs> yeah, or or been hit by. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it was cool, but yeah, just little sentimental stuff like that. That's great. So, just, so, so remember, guys, um, the forward facing sonar minnow came out in two new sizes a four inch and a five. Is um, it out? We're still yeah, selling stuff. We'll go back to lures now and get rid of go get off the apparel and go to lures. No, 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 no. Sell? We're not selling stuff. I just want no, to I know them. I'm just giving it a hard time. I did see them, so they are way bigger than I thought they would be. Oh, they're beautiful, dude. They they're, are awesome, but they are yeah, they're beefy. They're a full four inches and a full five inches. Yeah, they're beefy. And so so I, I actually got a couple packs of the four inches to, to do a video with, not a fishing video, but a in studio video, a how to. And um I I've actually been catching fish on them the few times that I've been going. Um, because it's, it was still winter here when I got them. And so, uh, you know, so the fish were behaving for, for forward facing sonar and, um, I am a fan. That's all. Are I'm they out play. on the lure net yet? Or are they just, uh, were they just at the classic? Cause I'm, oh, they might've just been at the classic. Did I make nope, a mistake? Nope, 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 nope. I made a mistake. There they are. So okay. in order to figure out, like, if you don't choose an option, it doesn't let you choose a link. Right. <clears throat> But if you choose like IU, um, three, you go, four, you go, or five inch, right? So then you yeah. go into options and it'll give you sizes and stuff like yeah, that. Three, four, or five. But yeah, no, they look fantastic. Oh, that four, that four inch is just money. I can't wait to drop that, drop shot that on smallmouth. Um, that's just money. Uh, it makes a great spinnerbait trailer too. But I, I really like them. And um, the BTL 24 code is going to be good all year. So capital BTL 24. Anyway, no more shameless plugs. That's it. We're done. We're done with the shameless plugs. Oh, I was going to say we're done with the show. Uh, no, we're only an hour. <laughs> no, I'm not. It's not okay. me. Oh, let's just give something away then or talk about giveaway or when we're going to give yeah. something away. So I absconded with um, Two five. Two absconded in one show. That's impressive. Oh, did I use it all be twice already? Yeah. You don't oh, use a word man. like that and forget. Man, oh live. I got to be careful because I, I noticed that um, there has been a drinking game floating around about some of my um, sayings that I say multiple times. So I'm trying to say things only once now, but I don't have you that. You have to have signature memory. sayings, though. Well, that's true. So that's you really true. you really should should lean into it instead of. Instead of shy away. <laughs> Instead of shy away. That's like our favorite word, which is, and I, that I could never remember. Bloviate. Blo bloviate, yeah. Bloviate. So so at any rate, so what, what the hell were we talking about? Oh, we were talking, I think, I believe you were going to lead into how we're going to give away the... Oh, yeah. I'm on it. I'm on it. So as you see, my note page is empty. So I'm failing. I'm failing in note taking tonight. Um. So I... I I have five or six um, color number sevens that I already autographed and we're going to give them away to some of the fans that didn't have a chance to make it to the Bassmaster Classic um, this trip, this go around. So I don't know how we're going to give them away yet, man. Yeah, that would have been helpful in the pre-show meeting. Yeah, well, well to be announced. <laughs> you know what? I think we should give starting next Thursday. We should give one away each week for the next six weeks. Okay. I'm good with that. And we'll give three away uh, to live listeners. And we'll give three away to someone who leaves a comment that can't watch live but wants to add to the show in the YouTube comments. Perfect. Or on iTunes. Want to leave an iTunes review on. Yeah, that's Ask better. Mark Live. Yeah. So three okay. and three. Three and three. Yeah. Does that sound good? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm totally down with that. Don't and I'm that. leaving it. I'm leaving it up to you on who to give it to. So you can get all the hate on that. And I'm completely innocent. That's OK. I, I, I got big shoulders. I could take it. Okay. <laughs> that works. Uh. Truck-wise, though, I do want to give a shout-out. It's 
So every once in a while, you know, we're in the industry and the hope is that you represent a company that allows you or other people to, to trust, to say, Hey, if they're behind it, they're good. This is where we're going to go. So I literally bought a truck because they sponsor professional fishing and an angler from, uh, from Gilchrist. Perfect. And they do a bunch in Texas. They sponsor Chris on the elite series. Uh, they sp- sponsor a couple different anglers. They have, a, they do a lot down in Texas with team trails and things too. So I went down there they hooked me up. They have like 20 uh, dealerships. I have nothing to do with them. I literally went down and uh, got the truck. Like that's I'm not how you, sponsored that's or how anything. You. But I went down and I did it just because they're involved in fishing. They're easy to work with. It took two or three times because once I saw the one that I wanted, I was like, yeah, no, we got to find that one. And, <laughs> uh, it's funny how that And worked. got the job done and it was super, super painless and smooth and easy. So that's how it's supposed to work in the industry. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. That's exactly right. Um, you gotta mm-hmm. support you gotta support well, you guys know that. You guys are actually really good at it. But um, but you you do, you gotta support what supports what you like to do for sure. Yep. What else you got? Dry mouth. <laughs> yeah, so I'm working on that. I still have to drive to Fort Worth tonight. What's what is it, a couple hours? Uh, right. Exactly. Three hours. Dealership is, uh, it's Gilchrist, but the, the parent company is Gilchrist, but the dealership was Pegasus Chevrolet, like a little town down in Texas. Jim was asking. Cool. I think they sold trucks to a couple of guys in the open. So. Oh, that's, that's good. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do boys and girls. So I'm good for another 350,000 miles. <laughs> Dude, I, that, that, tr- that truck that you had was on, was, was literally, it, was it really that bad? Like I yeah. got rid of it and everybody was like, yeah, we were, we had like a, we were taking bets on to what state you're going to break down in. Oh yeah. Dude. No, it was, it was beyond that bad. It, it was beyond that bad. Um, the one first truck I had on tour, um, I bought it and I literally traded it in with 187,000 miles on it. And the people at the place couldn't believe it. They're like, how the hell do you put that kind of mileage on? You've only had it for a couple of years. And I said, I travel. <laughs> I said, I travel for a living. And they go, yeah, you sure do. You know what I mean? And then I, I traded that in and got another one. And um, that's just the nature of the beast, man. When you run these tournaments, you run these tournaments, you put the mileage on your stuff and, and it's towing mileage too, you know. Did Steven anyone... asked, did anyone stick out to you guys as far as fans? Yeah, there was one. Uh, so I'm sitting there talking. His whole family was there, had a BTL hat on. And <laughs> he he is talking about, and he says something about uh, Santee. And I said, oh, did you fish? And he goes, yeah, I'm fishing the EQs as well. And I'm like, oh, really? That's cool. And uh, I said, how are you doing? He goes, I'm in 13th. Overall, came to BB, I'm down in 69th. This dude's in 13th <laughs> overall in the standards, waiting in line to talk to you, you and me. And I was like, well, dang, bang, maybe I should be freaking getting your autograph. <laughs> yeah, hey, Cody you- Steckel. Hey, you'll have that, dude. That's that's fishing, man. That's fishing. That's how fishing goes. Yeah, he has finishes of 58th, 28th, and 36th this year. And that puts him in 13th. Super nice dude. Super nice family. Excellent. Yeah, that's good fantastic. dude, too. Really enjoyed talking to him. So uh, hopefully I'll run into him in the check line in Alabama in the following <laughs> Yeah, the upcoming I mean, tournament. I mean, you got crap. You got mo- half the season left, three mm-hmm. quarters. But of the I mean, season. we talked for like five or ten minutes before he just. I mean, before. I mean, I had to like get it out of him. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I mean, got a little sheepish. I'm fishing them all. How are you doing? Oh, you know, I'm in thirteenth. I said, excuse me. <laughs> I said, like overall, like thirteenth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've had three pretty good ones. That's good. Good for him, man. It's it's. It, and th- that's how fishing goes and it's that's what makes the sport so cool because yep. 
Uh, one minute you could be on top, the next minute you could be on the bottom. I, I remember when I threw up my worst year ever, ever. Like it was horrifying. I don't think I, I don't think I had a finish above fiftieth place, and most of them were way down there. Um, just everything that went wrong could go wrong. Nothing went right. I I was despondent over it completely. And then I the next season came around, and I was real squeamish about about fishing again. You know what I mean? Cause I didn't have, I didn't yeah. have that validation. So I was real squeamish about it. And so then I decided that I was just going to not worry about anything except catching fish. And then I turned it around. But when you get wrapped up in the, when you get wrapped up in everything, Oh, Hey, what's up? There's little bammers. She came to visit. What are you doing? Um, but when you get wrapped up and, things that you know like i have to do this and i have to do that it gets it monkeys the works up and so when i realized that it's called fishing because you're supposed to just go fish I mean that's that's you know that's how it listen goes. i i i fought through some demons after santee so i had a bad one at uh toledo bend last year i think i finished like 130th or something like that but other than that you know whatever 30 some opens there's a couple people who let me know that uh that i haven't had many top 10s i get it but i finish in the top half of the field 98 percent of the time yeah i mean you don't you don't have I, to i had a limit streak of 25 consecutive days in the opens i was damn proud of that frank it's hard and to there was a lot of tournaments where I would go in and I would figure it out as I went. I mean, I talked to you sometimes before yeah. and I'm like, dude, I'm, I have no idea. And it happens. But it happened so many in a row where I had salvaged it, where I'd made it work that this, I wouldn't say it, sh this one shook my confidence a little. I will say it because I just assumed I'll figure it out. There's no way I can, uh, I'll tank that hard. And I mean, I'm putting all the effort in. I'm working. I'm trying to find the best pattern. It's not like I'm just going out there and saying it'll happen. I'm busting my ass on it. Right. Right. But I mean, dude, like it didn't freaking happen this time. And I didn't even think of 162nd or third as an option. Like I've always figured a way to finish in the top half of the field to finish, right. you know, a bad tournament was at 60th, 70th, 80th, even a 98th in Florida. There are 235 people in that tournament. That's a top half tournament. I get over a hundred angler of the year points, not great on paper, but when you look at the long and short of it, you right. can get away with that. This one was like, Oh wow. Yeah, no, that can happen. Yeah. But you learned something real valuable there. Because those oh, the fish went the fish honkered down in the knees and bedded down, yeah. And, and you were fish you were still fishing them post spawn, suspending in that water yeah. column. But I just mean like mentally, like up in my head, you're talking about that where yeah, it wasn't even I didn't even think of that as an option. The the total tank, right? Right. And, and it's not like I was trying to win it or top 10 it, or it was a one and done. Like I was fishing for points. I was trying to catch as much weight as I could each day. I didn't care if they were two and a half pounders. I didn't care if they were six pounders. Right. But so I got, you know, I've done a little bit of. Well, the only advice that I could tell you is it's over now. So leave it yeah. alone. You know, no, I'm, I mean? I'm good with it, yeah. but. Because we've had some fun. So we might as well have a little serious talk too. Yeah, right. I mean, but it's in the past. And that, and it doesn't matter now. That was the hardest thing. That was the hardest thing when I tanked one, and, mm. and I and I've tanked a bunch. Um, that was the hardest thing for me to do would be let it go, and um, but once I learned to to do that, then everything started to change because I didn't get I didn't get beat down on one event. One event beat me. It's not going to beat me in other events. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. you just forget it and move on. But don't forget what you learn. Um, that's the important part. Don't forget what you learn. Good stuff. I think we need to just end the show uh, with this photo. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That is fantastic, man. We're going to focus Frankie, on this region of the photo right here. Frankie, Bruce, and KVD. <laughs> if that's not on Frankie's wall, within two days, it's on BassFishingHOF.com, where you can also go to read all about the limited run of the Fred Arbogast, Jitterbugs, 
that you will be painting exclusively for Kevin. Ve Wait a second. We're going to keep this photo up. Does this mean that there's a possibility we could get KVD on day four with Frank Scalish to talk about this uh, lure drop to benefit the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame? There could be a possibility. I can only call him and ask him. That's all I can do. Like, what are we given the over under, like the percentage chance that we could get KVD to make a guest appearance on day four? Quite honestly, it's all going to be about timing because that dude is busy. I talked to him and he's busier now that he's not going to be fishing than when he was fishing. You so still got a cell. You still got a cell phone number. Yeah, I talked to him the other day. Oh, well, we're up to ninety percent then. Yeah, that's what I said. All I got to do is call and find out. It's just a matter of timing. Yeah, it's just going to be a timing issue. You know, if if the baits are going to release and he's going to be available, we got him. If the baits are going to release and he's not going to be available till later, then you know we may not get him. David saying it's a hundred percent. The other David, David, he's saying it's an eighty-five percent chance. All Jim's right. giving you a seventy-three percent chance. <laughs> All right, I'm going. I'm I'm going to weigh in and say there's a hundred percent chance. Okay, Clyde's giving it a hundred percent chance. The Pinhook Fishing Club. That's got to be. That's uh, the apple. Yeah, that's got to be uh, Alan. With the apple. That's right. We're in. If if Pinhook Fishing Club it says yes, then by God. Well, he's saying it just, just because he thinks it would be good for the brand because he knows how many people listen to BTL. I will. I will. I will. I, will uh, I have to make more notes. See, Matt, you're giving me more homework to do now. Okay. Um, well, we have to know because you haven't even painted them yet, right? Oh, they're done. Oh, they're done. Yeah, I painted them before I left for the classic. Okay. Uh, so we have to know when those are going to drop on Lure Net and then coincide KVD making a guest appearance on day four with Frank Scalish to that. You think they broke the internet before? <laughs> I think they got that glitch worked out. However, what are there a total of 900 of them? There's what, 300 for KVD and 300 for a couple different... Yeah, I, I read think, that. Uh, Bill, I think Bill Dance, Jason Christie, KVD, there might be one snuck in there for me somewhere down the road. Yeah, those I, will cannot, be gone in like... I cannot confirm nor deny. What is the over or under that those sell out faster than the first run of the color number sevens? I'm going to say the great the great crash of 24 jay's outdoors is already naming it the the jitterbug lure net crash of 24 <laughs> that's so good <laughs> i don't think they're going to sell out as fast as color 7 i think they will although they might it's I a know. kvd and a jitterbug collab i have i have i have i can't and i mean he's a strike king guy so then to get him to put his name on this for the Hall of Fame. I mean, this is definitely a one-off. Oh, yeah. It'll well, never happen again. It'll never happen again. <laughs> I'm everybody's real uncle. All right. So the That's plan was before we got sidetracked was we were going to bring the music in. We we're going to keep this photo up. We we're going to zoom it in. There that you is go. so funny, man. <laughs> there you go with Frankie in the background. So, what are the chances? <laughs> you got anything else? Nah, dude, I'm out. But I have, I, I'm saving it for another. So show. that's a yes. Yes, I have nothing else. <laughs> well, tease it a little bit. You can't well, do that. I, I can't. Gonna, I, I can't. turned the music down, so now I have to ramp it back up for a second closing. Well, because that's how we do it here. I can't. I'm not. A, I'm not sure. I. I'm not sure. I am supposed to uh, let this cat out of the bag. But I do. I do have. Since I made you turn the music down, um, I have a special thing coming on LureNet. Um, starting in. 
starting in May. It's gonna there there might be some signature series baits coming out on LureNet in May. That's a good that's a good tease. That's all I can do right now. Okay. Uh basszone.com, click on the shop BTL tab. If you're gonna buy something, add the St. Jude and BTL collab shirt. A hundred of the proceeds go to St. Jude uh for the next well, until April 8th, so it kind of depends on when you're listening to this. A, this is a one-off one off run right now of Frank Scaler's Signature Series Apparel, also the first drop of the new BTL merch. Check it out. I cannot thank the BTL fan base uh, and every single individual who I met at the Classic who jumps on to the live shows who weren't able to make it to the Classic, who comments, who send emails to both Frank and me, who DM yeah. us. Uh, pictures cannot thank you enough for the support that you've had at BTL. Uh, I look forward to doing the show every week. I know Frank looks forward yeah. to it. It's awesome when we get an evening show, we get some of the guys in that comment and that we talk to that we don't get to see on a regular basis. But I think that's all we got for tonight. Next Thursday, 8 30 a.m., we will be back with another edition of day four. Outstanding. See, see ya.